Welcome back, financial investing mutants. This is Greg, and we are talking about the best investment that you can focus on if you have only $1,000 in your investment account and you want to participate in special situations. Check it out. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of my YouTube channel on special situations investing through and my personal investing practice. As a quick disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Any companies that I mention in this presentation are discussed solely for illustrative purposes. Discussing such companies and the specifics about them is to help educate me and educate you about certain special situations. It is not a solicitation to purchase them. I recommend that you conduct your own research and identify why you might want to own the company yourself prior to your committing of any funds. I also recommend that you seek the services of a financial advisor that has considered your personal situation as your fiduciary. And then finally, may your education here grow your knowledge, improve your personal investing performance, and give you the confidence to take control of your future. Thanks a bunch for watching. Now on to the video. Investing mutants. What is the best special situation to invest in if you are, if you only have a thousand dollars? Now, uh, I can't say that this is the best situation, but in my view, this is the probably the highest probability of decent returns and the lowest probability of risk. And this is the reason why I focus on this specific special situation for anyone that has a small investing account. And uh, if you disagree with it, please tell me in the, in the comment section below and I'll take a look at it and see what I think. And anyway, let's, let's dive in. The best special situation that I think that anyone with a small account, when I'm thinking about a small account, I say $1,000 up to about $20,000 in their account, the best thing that they can spend money on is tender offers and exchange offers that have an odd lot priority. And more importantly, they should participate in that odd lot priority, in my opinion. Now, there are a couple of reasons why I say this. Let's dig into them, and then you can please tell me if you, if you agree or disagree, but I, I think that this is an opportunity for a lot of people to learn what they can do with a small sum and make it useful for their long-term investment goals. So the number one reason why I think that you should spend your time focused on odd lot transactions in a small investment portfolio is that if you don't have a lot of money, you, it will teach you how to search for and use the SEC filings that will make you successful in all the other special situations and all the other investing situations out there. So you learn how to use the SEC website and you learn how to do the searches that allow you to then dig into the forms that will then eventually make you more successful in your special situations investing. So number one, it gives you the education that allows you to be more successful in the long run. Number two, uh, often odd lot priorities allow you to participate in these special situations and get a higher re rate of return and a lower rate of risk because often with the odd lot priority your entire position will be accepted into the transaction whereas somebody who doesn't have an odd lot priority doesn't always get that that privilege and so they may have only 20 or 30 percent of their shares accepted in an, in a transaction whereas you will have a hundred percent of your shares accepted and so then you you can go ahead and keep the returns that are associated with that at a higher rate i think that in my view this is this is a huge advantage for the small people and it's not it's not one in my view that's going to be going away there's a couple of reasons why companies offer odd lot priorities. One of them is, is they offer an odd lot priority because they may have a follow-on uh, activity that they want to do and in order to do that follow-on activity they have to reduce the number of shareholders 
in the company to a certain number in order to to do that secondary transaction. This this goes with things like going private. This goes with things like companies that are that are exchanging their shares for another one that that may have a lot of small investors and they just want to kind of clean out their books a little bit. It reduces the administrative burden on the company overall. Well, that that's one of the reasons why they do it uh, and they'll continue to do it. And for you with a small a small account, this is this is just like gravy. This is this is your opportunity to participate in one of those things in the in the investing world that gives you an advantage over the big guy. Number three, the third thing that you reason why I recommend that you participate in odd lot transactions is that when you find you will find that when you participate in odd lot transactions that you can participate in many of them up to about twenty thousand without any major without any major issues. And it's important that you go ahead and participate in these in these on lot transactions because they will get you to that twenty thousand rather quickly. My own experience, I had about ten thousand that I dedicated to tender offers and on lot transactions when I when I was doing this. And yes, granted, I put this in right as COVID hit, and it was part of the post COVID uh, reaction, but. Basically in a year because I kept participating in these odd lot transactions. I turned about 10,000 up to almost 20,000 in in that one year So we're talking about if you can participate in these over and over again, and that actually comes to our fourth uh, Reason why you should participate in tender offers and odd lot transactions when it, with a small account is that you can participate in them over and over again and your velocity of returns uh, significantly improves so you're able to put money into one and then most of the time a tender transaction or not a lot transaction, even if you participate in it, will only tie up your money for about seven to eight weeks. So it's usually about a month from their announcement to the participation in the transaction. So about four weeks there and then, you know, two to three weeks in in kind of their accounting accrual through your your broker and then you get the cash in your account and you can go in and hit the next one. Well, if you participate in just those on lot transactions with that thousand dollars and say you're you're successful with five of them in the year, that's a fifty percent return if you if your target is ten percent with every transaction. So you can you can talk about a significant return, a significant rate of return by just participating in those tender offers. Now, that does mean that you will not have a lot of diversification. So just be aware of that. If you have a small account, you know, $1,000, it may be difficult for you to get $1,000, but if you are willing to make the concerted effort to learn how to invest in special situations, that $1,000 will grow uh, rather quickly. And then, then you'll feel more confident to invest in things later on. In summary, guys, thank you so much for, for watching. And in, in summary, I, I wanted to just talk about this. Your odd lot transactions should be uh, able to help you grow that $1,000 into $20,000 in a rather quick time. Now, participating in them will allow you to learn some of the skills necessary for you to be successful in all other special situations and make you a better investor overall. And in reality, that $1,000 is less about making money on the $1,000 and more about you learning the skills necessary for you to be a successful investor over the long term as a special situations investor. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think. If you appreciated this investing advice, uh, please comment in the section below and let me know what, what your perspective is. And I look forward to catching you next week, and we uh, good luck with your investments. Thanks.